Well, our radon saga continues. Summer's been busy, so I've fallen a bit behind on the updates, but things did not improve the way we were hoping they would, and so we're pulling out the big guns. But there's a few little things that I have to take care of first. Stick around. Okay, several months worth of updates. After sealing the floors and the walls, we did a follow-up test. It was the spring, so we expected the numbers to be lower anyways, and they were a tiny bit lower than they had been before, but, but not really, so that worried us. Rather than do something else and order another test, I actually ordered an electronic monitor. There have been some issues with that monitor. I think I'll probably review that in another post. But at any rate, from what that suggested, we just weren't seeing an improvement. And so after trying to contact a local radon remediation guy, we just couldn't get a hold of him. Um, we contacted a, a national chain and they came in. Um, they installed, I'll show you, um, they installed this pipe over here. They're going to install a fan, but first we have to move the propane tanks because the fan can't be that close to the propane tanks. But right now, I'm going to deal with this drain in the floor. Now, I hadn't really thought this through, um, but obviously we, we did all of this sealing of the floor, but there's this open drain. And talking to the radon guy, it seems like it, it might be open to just gravel and perforated pipe underneath the foundation. Um, maybe not. I don't know. I'm not a contractor. Um, but at any rate, that seems like it's a possibility. And he's saying before he can put the fan in, he's going to have to seal that. And if we got flooded, we would, we would have to basically pop the seal and, and let it drain and then reseal it. Um, but right now, before he comes back to do the fan, after we've moved the propane tanks, right now I'm just going to um, try to cover this a bit and see on our imperfect uh, radon monitor if that makes any difference. Um, because we've, we've had the radon, even in the summer, spiking pretty high, like up into six, seven range. And that's especially when it rains. And the radon guy explained that basically when you get rainwater all over the ground, it forms that seal. And then if you're in a dry basement, that's the one place where the radon can percolate up. And we've got this enormous hole. So, First, I've got to move all this crap. We'll get to the drain. We'll plug that up and we'll see if it makes any difference. And again, since our radon has been a bit weather dependent, we may have to wait a bit to see how that does. Um, but I'll just feel a little better um, after sealing that up. So, moving stuff. These are our window inserts, which are a cheap and easy way to keep your heating bills down in the winter. We had a number of these come with the house, um, but we made a few last winter. You can check out an older post to see how we did that. Um, it's pretty cheap and easy. Okay, here's a bag of, here's my bag of water. Uh, it does appear to be leaking. I can't tell. Okay, here's our second bag of water. Went with a new bag this time. And who knows if this is gonna hold, but if it doesn't, it's right over the drain. So we'll see over the next few days, and especially the next time it rains, if this makes any difference. So here's what the radon guy has done so far. He drilled a hole in the floor and put in this pipe this bit monitors the vacuum level, I think. And he left the fan that's gonna go into the system outside, but he can't install that yet because of the propane tanks. So this is what we've got so far on the outside of the house, but he can't put in the fan and finish the rest of the work until the propane tanks get moved because 
The fuel company requires 10 feet between um, electrical devices that might spark. And so we're probably going to have to move them out over there. And then eventually this pipe is going to go up and past the eaves. But that's all going to happen later. Here's our Air Things Wave radon monitor. It's telling us we have moderate levels of radon. There have been some issues with this. I'll talk about it in a separate review. Um, but it has been useful and interesting to see uh, the changes in radon levels, especially with the rain. That's a good thing to know. Okay, here we're looking at all of the data for the month. The data before this was lost when I had to reset the device. And we can pretty much ignore this opening data because this happened at the beginning too. It starts you off at zero and you're like, oh great, this is looking great. And then it just climbs and climbs and climbs and climbs. So I'm just going to ignore that until it reaches the peak. So now, again, this isn't well marked on the x-axis, but I'm going to guess that I put that water bag in somewhere around here. So this is just a tiny sample size, unfortunately. But it does seem that the variability before I put the bag in went a little bit higher and a little less low. And after I put the bag in, it did dip down into the green a few times. And it didn't spike quite as high. So things are looking sort of like the bag helped. But really, the sample size is much too small to see if that's actually having an effact. Again, I'll review the Air Things and the app in another post.